What superannuation fund you choose to invest with can have a huge impact on how much money you're left during retirement. It's actually quite amazing the difference in investment formats that you can get by simply choosing the right super fund and also investment option. So for example, if you're an individual who had a starting super balance of $100,000, and you're also earning a $100,000 salary, then simply by choosing an ordinary super fund could result in you retiring with over $100,000 less in retirement over a 15 year period. Hey, my name is Raymond, back again with another video. So in this video, I wanna talk about and review five of the best superannuation funds that you can consider investing into that will ensure that you will be set up for life when you do eventually retire. Now the review will cover a few different topics. I'll be talking about the 10 year investment performance, the fees that come along with investing into these super funds, the different investment options that each of them offer, and also insurance options as well. Now, before we get into the video, I just wanted to preface that all of the super funds that I'll be talking about today are known as industry super funds. And you may have heard them in passing or from a TV commercial, but mainly there are three types of general super funds. There's retail super funds, industry super funds, and also self-managed super funds. Retail super funds are generally managed by the banks, insurance companies, or some other financial institution. Whilst industry super funds were originally started by trade unions or employee associations, catering specifically to employees within that industry. So for example, CBUS was created for those working within the construction and building sector. Most industry super funds are now open to the public, so they're no longer only open to employees working within that specific industry. Now, the main difference between an industry super fund and a industry super fund is how they manage their profits. Retail super funds generally return their profits to their shareholders and investors, whilst industry super funds return their profits to their own members, in this case, you. This means that industry super funds have historically provided higher benefits to their members after taxes and fees. So generally it's recommended to choose an industry super fund regardless of what super fund you go with. Now, before we move on to the comparison, I just wanted to quickly talk about the assumptions that I'll be using when doing this review. So I'll be assuming a starting superannuation balance of $50,000, and I'll also be doing the analysis based on the balance option from each super fund. And the funds that I'll be comparing include Host Plus, Australian Super, CBUS, Unisuper, and the Australian Retirement Trust, which was a merger between SunSuper and QSuper. So let's firstly take a look at the 10 year investment performance from the balanced portfolio of each super fund. We can see that overall Host Plus has performed the best returning 10.7% per annum to its investors, whilst Unisuper came in second returning 10.5% per annum. Then we have the Australian Retirement Trust returning 10.2% per annum, Australian Super coming in at fourth with 9.7% per annum, and finally CBUS coming in last returning 9.5% per annum. Even though there is quite a significant difference between Host Plus and CBUS, just know that past performance isn't an indicator of future performance. If we also compare those investment performances against both the median 10 year performance of all industry super funds in general, and the whole industry super fund in general, we can see that all five have actually outperformed them quite significantly. Now, moving on to the fees, in general, there are three types of fees that can be charged from any super fund. The first fee is an administration fee, which is typically a flat fee that will be deducted on a weekly basis from your superannuation balance. The second fee is generally an investment fee, and these are the costs that the super funds charge to actually manage your investments on an ongoing basis. Those will include any external investment fees that they need to make, any performance related fees, or transaction fees as well. And sometimes there might be an indirect fee as well, and this covers any other costs that the super fund has to bear on your behalf. So here on the table, you can see the different fee structures that each of the superannuation funds will charge. And we can see that overall Host Plus seems to be the most expensive with close to $620 per year in fees, whilst the Australian Retirement Trust has the lowest amount of fees with just over $260 per year. Now it is important to note that because the fee structure is different, as your account balance grows, the fees that you'll be paying across each of the different super funds will be different. So for example, because the Australian Retirement Trust charges an additional 0.1% of your account balance for admin fees, as your account balance grows, that 
admin fee will also grow as well. So for example, if you had a $500,000 account balance, your total admin fee will be actually $578, as opposed to Unisuper, which charges the lesser of $96 per year or 2% of your account balance. So even if you had $500,000 in your account, you'd only still be charged $96 in admin fees. Now, when it comes to different investment options, most superannuation funds will give you a few different options to go down depending on how much control you want over your superannuation. The first one that is offered is generally a pre-mixed investment option. Now, these are investment options with a predetermined asset allocation that is determined by the fund managers running that superannuation fund. And they'll generally offer several different varieties of these based on your risk tolerances. The second investment option is generally a DI why mix option. So this gives you more control as an investor into what asset classes you want to invest into and how much for each asset class. One of the common complaints with the pre-mixed investment options of superannuation funds is that they are generally pretty heavily weighted towards Australian shares. And some investors don't actually like to be too heavily weighted towards Australia. So you could use the DIY mix version to perhaps weight more towards international equities. And the final investment option is a self-managed option. And this gives you the greatest flexibility in terms of how your superannuation is invested. You're given a list of securities across the S&P slash ASX 300 index, and you can invest into individual shares, individual ETFs, leaks, you name it. I think that for most people out there, going with the route of choosing one of the pre-mixed investment options based on your own risk tolerance is probably the best idea for most people. The default pre-mixed investment option will always be that superannuation funds balanced portfolio, which is the portfolio that we've been using in our assumption in this video. These will typically be made up of an asset allocation of roughly 70% growth assets, which include property and equities, and then also 30% in defensive assets, such as cash or bonds. Now, if you are someone that still had another 20 to 30 years until you reach retirement, then this asset allocation might not be as optimal if you are looking to really build a large nest egg during retirement. I would personally recommend going down the route of a high growth option, which will generally have an asset allocation of 90% growth assets and 10% defensive assets. Generally speaking, a higher growth option will come with a higher level of risk and experience more volatility in the short term. However, it will typically achieve higher returns over the longer term. And given that you and I won't be touching our superannuation funds for another 20 to 30 years, it makes sense to go down the route of a high growth option. The general strategy with superannuation is that during your accumulation phase, so when you're trying to build wealth and accumulate wealth, so this could be anywhere between when you're 20 years old all the way to I would say 50 years old, you generally want to be in a high growth investment option. And then over time, as you near your preservation age or you near retirement, you can begin slowly shifting your asset allocation towards a more balanced option or a more conservative option as well. A conservative option will definitely be less risky and be less volatile in the short term, which is what you want as you near your preservation age. You don't wanna be invested 90% into equities just before you're hitting retirement, only for there to be a recession and then you lose tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars right before retirement. Now, finally, let's talk about the investment options that generally come with superannuation funds. Now, generally speaking, there are three types of insurance options that come with superannuation funds that you can either opt in or opt out for. So the various different insurance options include life insurance, income protection insurance, and total and permanent disability insurance. Now, depending on where you are in your life will probably determine whether or not you want to take up these different insurance options. Now, personally, I'm not married yet. I don't have any dependents, nor do I have a mortgage yet. So currently for myself, I'm not opted in to take up any of these different insurance options. However, in the future, when I have a family, when I have kids and a mortgage, then I probably will take up all three investment options. As a general rule of thumb, if you are looking to take up these insurance options, 
you should cover up to 12 times your annual income between your life insurance and total and permanent disability insurance and cover up to 75% of your income for income protection insurance. Now, at the end of the day, any of the five superannuation funds that I've talked about so far in this video are generally going to be good options to invest into. The general guideline that you should be following with your superannuation, assuming that you're you know, still in your accumulation phase, is to invest into a high growth fund within an industry super fund, taking into consideration fees that you'll be paying over time. Now the superannuation industry as a whole is always constantly changing and superannuation funds are always changing their fee structures. So this video may not always be relevant, let's say in the future one year from now. However, there are several great resources that you can use to quickly compare superannuation funds. The first one is the Your Super Comparison tool that is provided by the ATO themselves. The tool enables you to filter and sort super products to shortlist funds for a detailed comparison. There are other comparison websites such as CanStar. However, be careful because oftentimes they will be paid to be promoting certain superannuation funds. Anyway, that is all I have for you guys in this video. If you learned something new, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more content in the future. And as always, you guys have been awesome and I will see you guys in the next video.